tired of being discouraged and disheartened by the culture? Does your spiritual life need some fresh air? Well, how about fresh air for your soul and an ocean breeze for the body? Join Michael Voris and Father Z of the world-renowned Catholic blog, What Does the Prayer Really Say? on a Lenten retreat at sea. This seven-day trip is the perfect opportunity for couples and singles to strengthen their faith and clear their minds. Find out more by clicking on the attached link or call 805-526-6565. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook event page where those who already signed up can introduce themselves. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. You know, there's an old expression, there's no such thing as just one cockroach. My mom, God rest her soul, used to use that expression a lot. She meant that whenever you find one bad thing in a situation, it's generally the case that there are other bad things as well. You can kind of call it the red flag phenomenon. You know, your suspicions are aroused because some unpleasantry comes to your attention. You're like, hmm. Take the case of L.A.'s former Cardinal Roger Mahoney. There were warning signs and red flags all over his reign in L.A., a cockroach that could be seen here or there. From the architectural horror that he built, that is L.A.'s cathedral, nicknamed the Taj Mahoney, to the even more frightening religious education conference he began and unfortunately is still being conducted, there was a stench around this archdiocese for decades. That religious ed conference gathers thousands of Catholic school teachers every year for a number of days and presents them with one dissident teaching after another, fills their heads with modernistic notions and interpretations of the faith that they then go out and spread to students in their charge. And that is exactly what Mahoney wanted to accomplish, but more on that in a moment. Of course, the entire conference is always topped off with a mass that could only be considered insulting to the Almighty. It's more of a floor show than an act of worship. Who could honestly be surprised then that this is what has come now for Cardinal Mahoney, being essentially publicly disgraced for his involvement in a massive cover-up of homosexual predator priests. Let's not forget that while he was enlisting armies of attorneys to protect his own eminence, He had already presided over the largest payout in the history of the world to victims of predator priests, $660 million. $660 million, two-thirds of a billion dollars from just one archdiocese. Cardinal Mahoney is a candidate for one of the prelates in America who has done more to destroy the church than any other. His closest competition in a very crowded field would be Chicago's former Cardinal, Joseph Bernadine. For a long period, these two men ruled the church in America, advancing their distorted versions of Catholicism with its emphasis on social justice while downplaying adherence to magisterial truths. Bernadine practically set the stage and cleared the decks for the common attitude now expressed by hundreds of Catholic pro-abortion politicians of being personally opposed to abortion, but... But here's what is most alarming in all of this. For a substantial period of time, decades, practically no priest or monsignor in America who was named bishop was named without at least the implicit approval of these two men. And in many cases, they were elevated to bishop with the hardline backing of these two. And when it comes to promoting people, well, who are you most likely to promote? Well, of course, people who see the world like you do. They share your same worldview, most likely your temperament. In the case of theology, your same opinions. Most likely the same management style. This is just all human nature. You are not going to press hard for someone you don't either like or agree with to be promoted, at least not generally. So it begins to take your breath away when you stop and realize that these two men sat atop the church in America for decades, pushing their agendas and promoting loads of clerics and hiring tons of lay people who agreed with their watered-down Catholicism. They unleashed a spiritual terror on the church, far greater in its destructive power than even the homosexual clergy sex abuse crisis, although that was one cockroach that could have easily been an indicator that somewhere there was a larger nest of them. Cardinal Bernadine insisted in his last will and testament that, get this, the Chicago Gay Men's Chorus sing at his wake which it did, which they did. 
He admitted publicly that three times he had been implicated in charges of sexual abuse himself, although, in fairness, none of them was ever proven in a court of law. Cardinal Mahoney was such close friends with Bernadine that he was the chief presider at Bernadine's funeral. One of Bernadine's closest buddies among the nation's bishops was John Roach, who rose to the level of Archbishop of Minneapolis. When he was promoted to that see, the gay publication The Advocate out of New York praised his appointment, saying, at last, a bishop who openly supports gay civil rights. Observers at the time said Bernadine and Roach were absolutely inseparable. The power base for all of these birds of a feather was the Conference of U.S. Bishops, at the time known as the National Conference of Catholic Bishops, or the NCCB. Today, it's the USCCB. In the late 1960s, Detroit's Cardinal John Dearden brought then-Bishop Bernadine to the conference to the Office of General Secretary, and from that powerful post, Bernadine consolidated his authority and his power and began exerting intense political power from behind the scenes. Both Bernadine and Roach were in deep with Mahoney, who saw his star rising quickly with such powerful allies. These men, and many of the ones whose careers they advanced, shared a view of false ecumenism and promoted it heavily, watering down the Catholic faith heavily in the minds of ordinary Catholics. They all, the whole gang, never stopped talking about social justice, but could rarely find a word for holy days of obligation, the rosary, hell, etc. And when it came to the homosexual priest sex abuse cover-up, they used whatever authority they could, certainly Mahoney, as the records now reveal, to hide, distort, and keep from the public the truth. Even when certain guidelines and policies were finally adopted, it was more out of a concern for the terrible financial losses and public relations disasters that might occur than any real thoughts of the victims. The Episcopate in America was ruled over by this mindset since essentially the end of the Second Vatican Council in the mid-1960s. The mindset was one of using the institution and all its trappings to quietly insert a new church, what has been dubbed by many as Am Church, the American Church. Cardinal Mahoney in particular was masterful at this, not only in his own right, but also in the various appointments and hires he made, many of whom are still around today and active and far from retirement, who share the Mahoney mindset. As men of this mindset advanced along their plans and became further and further removed from the truth of the church, which is of course only natural since they were trying to create a church of their own devising, they became open to all manner of corruption, which can and does happen to everyone who moves away from our blessed Lord. No exceptions. As they and their reigns fell more away from authentic Catholicism, they fell more and more into spiritual darkness and all the evils that live and hide in that darkness. A morally bankrupt approach to hundreds of sexual abuse victims, a cathedral that is nothing less than hideous, a $660 million settlement payout that may be only the beginning when Mahoney thought it was the end, an annual religious education conference designed to instill Amchurch into the minds of thousands of teachers so they could in turn then go out and corrupt younger minds in their charge, a clergy peppered with homosexuals, a primetime battle with Mother Angelica and her EWTN network over his tired heterodoxy, a battle which, by the way, Mahoney eventually won by forcing her to resign and no longer have any involvement. Many say EWTN has never been the same since Mother left. It's also a little shocking that Mahoney was one of the loudest voices calling for the head of Boston's Cardinal Bernard Law for his covering up of homosexually abusive clergy when Mahoney was doing the exact same thing on the Pacific Coast. But Law represented a more orthodox approach to the faith, at least on paper, and he became fair game, therefore, for the heterodox like Mahoney to throw overboard. This is the legacy of Cardinal Roger Mahoney in Los Angeles and his 26-year reign. There's never just one cockroach. But there's another saying that is even more relevant because while all those things happened in the past, still present are those clerics and lay people in Los Angeles and all around the country that share their same stripes from Bernadine to Roach and the hundreds that they all heavily promoted. While there's never just one cockroach, it's just as true that birds of a feather flock together. 
it would be unwise to presume that the church in America will settle into an era of peace and stability until these past horrors are owned up to, and most especially, that people be vigilant about the allies and underlings that all these men promoted. Lord Jesus, save your people. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Sick of TV and its cultural rot? Tune in to churchmilitant.tv and become a premium subscriber, where you will get access to fresh shows with solid church doctrine. As a premium subscriber, you'll get hundreds of hours of programming, which includes investigative shows, catechesis, apologetics, church history lessons, and a lot more. What are you waiting for? Forget the bad television and dive into the riches of the Catholic faith for only $10 a month.